In 1975, the Yukari Law was passed by the Japanese government as a method to solve low birth rates. After someone turns 16, they would get a notice from the government as to who they are supposed to marry. The match was based on genetics, and not only did it solve the birth rate issue, but the children born were also very intelligent. To go against the government's choice and try to find romance with someone else other than the selected person was forbidden. A boy named Najima was against this system as he wanted to live his life as he deemed fit. Najima sits in his classroom, watching his longtime crush Takasaki from afar as he doesn't have enough courage to go up to her and confess his feelings. His friend Takeda had gotten the notice from the government, but he says that he wants to find love himself and doesn't want to marry someone selected for him by someone else. Najima, Takeda, and their other friends take an oath to never get married, and Takasaki also joins them, which surprises everyone. After she leaves, they talk about how she has turned 16, but still hasn't gotten the government's notification. All of them wish to be selected as the person to marry Takasaki. After going home, Najima thinks about five years ago, he was in elementary school and gave his eraser to Takasaki. She thanked him, and ever since that moment, he has been in love with her, but has never talked to Takasaki. As he is having dinner, his family brings up how he is about to turn 16, and they all are excited about him getting married. Hearing his family talk about marriage, he realizes that he doesn't have much time left, so he should confess his feelings to Takasaki. The next day at school, he approaches Takasaki and says that she was his classmate in elementary school, but Takasaki says that she doesn't remember him. This shatters all of his confidence as he realizes that the moment in elementary school that was precious to him meant nothing to Takasaki. He apologizes for stopping her, and as she is about to leave, he yells out that he will wait for her at the park behind their school at 6 p.m. Majima now waits in the park, but Takasaki doesn't arrive so he starts building burial mounds to pass the time when the police tell him to go home as it is quite late. But just as he is about to leave, Takasaki arrives. She asks Najima about the burial mounds that he built, and as he starts explaining them, she starts laughing and says that he hasn't changed a bit as he was just as passionate about burial mounds when they were little. Majima asks her how she can remember that because before, she said that she doesn't know who he is, and she replies that she lied. Majima tells her that he likes her, which makes Takasaki cry as she brings out the eraser he had given her in elementary school and says that she has also liked him all this time. Majima now tells her that he loves her and hugs her, after which they start kissing. As they are kissing, the clock hits 12 and Najima gets a message on his mobile. He realizes that he has turned 16 years old and the message is from the government telling him that the girl selected for him is Takasaki. They both can't believe this miracle, but suddenly, Najima's mobile turns off and two people from the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare arrive and give Najima a document telling him he is to marry a girl named Lelina Sanada. Najima Shocked by this, tells them that he just got a message telling him that he will marry Takasaki, but they say that he must be mistaken because this document is absolute. After they leave, Takasaki tells Nenjuma that these 30 minutes of memories have given her the courage to live for a long time, and that she runs away while crying, but Nenjuma catches up to her and hugs her, as she is the only one he loves and wants to spend his life with. Nenjuma's family sets up a meeting with Lilina and her family, but on the day of the meeting, Nenjuma bails and goes to school. He tells everyone that he isn't going to get married, which shocks everyone, after which a teacher tells Nenjuma to go home and says in addition to learning at school, he also needs to think about his future. Takasaki now approaches Najima and asks him why he came to school today and Najima replies that he wanted to talk about them first before going to meet Alina. Takasaki says that they should just keep each other in their memories, so he should go and meet his future wife. He goes to an inn where after seeing Lelina, he is shocked as she is very beautiful, and he has never seen someone as beautiful as her other than Takasaki. After the two families introduce each other, Lelina asks Nenjima questions about his life in order to get to know him, but Nenjima is spaced out as he is still thinking about Takasaki. Lelina gets angry because Nenjima isn't replying to her and tells him that she isn't going to marry him because he has no manners. After Lelina leaves, Nenjima goes to find her to apologize for her behavior. He accidentally runs into her, and she tells him about how she is scared of the thought of marriage, but still, she decided to come here to face her fears, but Nenjima acted very rudely towards her. Nijuma apologizes to her, and after she forgives him, he says that he was thinking about Takasaki, who he has had a crush on, for a very long time. Lelina asks Nijuma to tell her more about Takasaki, and after hearing Nijuma's story, she gets intrigued by him. Nijuma had told Lelina that Takasaki suddenly started hating him, but Lelina thinks that she is hiding her true feelings and offers to help Nijuma find out how Takasaki really feels about him. In school, Majuma's friends are jealous seeing how cute Lelina is, and one of Majuma's friends asks Takasaki if she wants to see Najima's future wife, but she refuses. Majuma now goes to Lelina's school to meet her, but asking around about her, he finds out that her nickname is Sanatomoshi. He finds Lelina in the sick room as she had fallen ill during school. He asks her about her nickname, which makes her angry, and she reveals that when she started school she was very ill and wasn't able to attend classes, due to which the other girls started calling her Sanatomoshi. She is also very socially awkward, that's why she hasn't been able to make any friends, but Nenjima tells her that he also couldn't talk to any girls, but he can easily talk with her. 
as she is like an open book. After school, Lelina asks Najima to tell her more about Takasaki when they see her going past them. Lelina approaches her, and they go into a restaurant where she asks Takasaki how she really feels about Najima. Takasaki starts talking about all the little things she likes about Najima and tells Lelina that she feels relieved talking about it because she has had to hide her feelings for a long time and didn't have anyone to talk to about them. Takasaki leaves, telling Lelina that they should hang out again, which makes Lelina cry as this was the first friend she has ever made. Najima now comes out from hiding, and as he talks with Lelina, he reveals that he has kissed Takasaki, so Lelina tells him that he should kiss Takasaki one more time. Najima tells his friend Nisaka that Lelina is telling him to come to her house. Nisaka says that Najima has guts as he went to her all-girls school to meet her, which Nisaka could never do. They remember and laugh about the time when Nisaka was being bullied and Najima called the police. Najima goes to Lelina's house but is surprised to see that Takasaki is also present. Seeing Najima, Takasaki says that she is going to leave which causes Lelina to get sad so Takasaki decides to stay. Lelina and Takasaki start talking with each other and Najima just becomes a background for them. Lelina suddenly asks Najima and Takasaki a kiss, which makes both of them blush. Takasaki goes to the washroom and Nenjima yells at Lelina for putting them on the spot. Takasaki returns and says that they should kiss, but they don't want to kiss in front of Lelina as they don't want to hurt her feelings, but she says that they should do it. Just as Takasaki and Najima are about to kiss, Najima pulls away as he is very nervous, which makes Takasaki giggle, and she finds him very cute in his nervous state. Takasaki now leaves, and as Lelina goes to see her off, Takasaki asks her if her heart started racing, seeing them almost kiss. Lelina says that she doesn't like Najima, so she doesn't mind it at all, but Takasaki says that even though she doesn't care right now, she will in the future. She also tells Lelina that she should try to fall in love with Najima and marry him because she is the right girl for him. Lelina goes to her room, breathing heavily and blushing, where she tells Najima that he should kiss Takasaki every day. In school after their PE class, the girls start shouting at Nisaka, who is very famous in the school, but he says that everyone just wants to pass the time until they get their notice from the government. Najima sees Nisaka and Takasaki sharing a look which makes him think that something is going on between them. Nenjima, while going to his class, runs into Takasaki who asks her if Lelina said anything after she left. Nenjima says that she told him to kiss Takasaki every day. Now they see a teacher coming toward them and as they are already late to class, Nenjima pulls her behind a pillar to hide from the teacher where they start kissing, but they are seen by Nisaka. After school ends, Nenjima tells Nisaka that he wants to talk to him, but Nisaka says that he has to attend a meeting. Nijima says that he will wait for him to come back, and while waiting for Nizaka, he thinks about how he just kissed Takasaki and if he has crossed the forbidden line, which is that you can't have romance with anyone other than your assigned spouse. Nisaka returns, but when he sees Najima sleeping, he starts laughing and ends up kissing him. Lelina and Najima are having dinner with Najima's family when his parents start complimenting them about how good they look together. They even ask them if they have kissed yet, which makes Lelina and Najima blush. Najima's parents say that they started being intimate from the start, and Lelina asks them why did they kiss each other for the first time to which they reply that they liked each other. Lelina now goes with Majima into his room, but she is disgusted by the state of his room. She asks him to let her clean the room as she can't stand the sight of it. Meanwhile, Nenjima is just thinking about how amazing it is that there is a girl in his room. After cleaning the room, Lelina starts going through pictures from Najima's grade school and is amazed to see how cute Takasaki was when she was little. Lelina asks Najima if he kissed Takasaki as she asked him to do, and Najima tells her that he did, which makes Lelina realize that she is not mad about it, just like she thought. She asks him if Takasaki liked the kiss, but Najima says that he didn't ask her, but all he knows is that he was very happy. Two people from the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare arrive to conduct their interviews with Lelina and Najima. They tell them that the data they use to assign a person to their spouse is collected from the person's early age, so their selected person is usually the perfect match for the person. They also reveal that they disregard a person's outer appearance in their selection, as it is a scientific fact that a person's beauty has no effect on how compatible they are with someone. They now ask Lelina and Nenjima how they feel about each other, but Nenjima says that he doesn't know yet as even though in his head he knows that Lelina is his future wife, his feelings still haven't caught up to that fact. Lelina says she can't provide a definite answer and asks them to provide the data they use to match two people. The members, before leaving, ask Lelina and Najima if they know where Takasaki lives. Lelina asks them if Takasaki has also received her notice, but they refuse to answer as it is Takasaki's personal information. Najima loses all hope of living his life with Takasaki, believing that she has got her notice, but Lelina tells him to call down. She says that if he is giving up this easily, she is very disappointed in him, which motivates Najima, and he says that he was wrong and is losing hope so easily. Najima's mother now tells them about a camping trip she is planning with Lelina's family. Najima goes with Lelina to take her to her house and on their way, Lelina tells Najima to kiss Takasaki even more, but he says that he isn't going to do that anymore because it feels weird kissing her just because Lelina asked him to do so. 
Melina says that the more weird thing is that they live in a world where it is forbidden to kiss someone you love. The next day at school, Najima tries to find a moment to ask Takasaki if she has gotten her notice, but he can't seem to do so. Their class teacher now tells Najima to help Takasaki after school in making pamphlets as one of the class representatives is absent. After school, as Najima goes to help Takasaki, he sees her and Nisaka talking about something, which makes him curious. Takasaki now thanks Najima for his help, and he asks her about the ministry people going to her house, but she says they had some business with her family and that she didn't get her notice. Najima asks her what she would have done if she got her notice, but Takasaki says that it wouldn't matter as Najima is the only person who is special to her, after which they kiss. At home, Melina calls and tells Najima that she has invited Takasaki to come with them on the camping trip his mother is arranging. Takasaki now goes to Nizaka to ask him to come with him on the trip. Nizaka refuses at first, but seeing Najima begging him, he agrees to come with him but is shocked to hear that both Lilina and Takasaki are also coming along. Meanwhile, Takasaki sits in her bathtub, thinking if it's okay for her to feel happy about going on a trip with Najima. Najima goes to the train station to pick up Nisaka, Lilina, and Takasaki for the camping trip, as their parents had already gone ahead. Seeing Nisaka coming along, Takasaki and Lilina are surprised, and Lilina calls him a pervert because when they met before, Nisaka called her a virgin. Najima tries to calm Lilina down while Nisaka and Takasaki talk with each other. When they get onto the train, Najima asks Nisaka what he was talking about with Takasaki, but when Nisaka doesn't give a clear answer, Najima thinks that Nisaka must like Takasaki. After they reach the camping site, Najima and Lilina's mother asks Nisaka and Najima to cook dinner. Najima thinks that Nisaka will be good at cooking, but seeing him work, he realizes that Nisaka has no idea what he is doing. He tells Nisaka to just wash the vegetables, but is shocked to see that Nisaka is using soap to do so. After making the food, Najima goes to find Lilina and Takasaki, and finds them enjoying the lake in their swimsuits. They see Najima and ask him to come enjoy the water with them, but he is too nervous to do so. Lilina goes towards him to get him into the water, but slips and turns her ankle. Najima carries her back to the cabin, but both are very nervous, as they touch more than they thought. Lilina's dad is a vet, and he treats her, after which he asks Najima what he wants to do in his life, and Najima replies that he is interested in burial mounds so he would like to do something related to them. At night, Najima says to Nisaka that it feels like he is hiding something, which makes Nisaka think that he is talking about the time he kissed Najima when he was sleeping. As Nisaka is about to reply, Lilina and Takasaki come to their door, and Lilina says they should go hiking. They split into two groups, with Lilina and Nisaka going with each other, and Takasaki and Najima going together. Najima apologizes to Takasaki as Lilina is always forcing them together, but she says that she is having fun. She asks Najima if he would have also carried her the same way he carried Lilina, and he replies that he would do the same thing. Takasaki now sees a firefly, and as she is chasing it, she falls down a small cliff, and Najima, trying to save her, also falls down. They fall on top of each other, and Takasaki holds Najima close to her, saying that she wants to stay in this position for a while. On the other hand, Nisaka is asking Lilina about what she plans to accomplish by pushing Najima and Takasaki close to each other. He tells her that if Najima and Takasaki get married, she would just have to stay as their friend, and if she ever wanted more than that, she would even lose their friendship. He also says that if Najima calls off their arrangement, he will have to pay a penalty as no school accepts an application of a student who cancels their wedding with their match. They now also see a firefly, and as they follow it, they run into Najima and Takasaki. They all try to get back to the hiking trail when they come across a group of fireflies. They all hold hands as they are mesmerized by the beautiful lights of the fireflies. They return to their homes, and as Takasaki and Nisaka go toward their home, Najima apologizes to Nisaka for forcing him to come on this trip, but he says that he had fun. Lilina now asks Najima to take her to see a burial mound, which makes him very excited. Lilina dreams about kissing Najima, and the next morning, she starts researching French kissing. As she is reading a book on it, a girl approaches her and says that she wants to be her friend. She tells Lilina that she is the little sister of the doctor who took care of her six years ago when she was admitted to the hospital. She tells Lilina that her brother used to praise her for how brave she is, and that she never cried even though she rarely got to see her parents. Lilina says that even though she is happy that she wants to be her friend, she has nothing to talk to her about. The girl leaves saying that it's a shame because she likes how open and honest Lilina is. As she is about to leave, Lilina stops her and asks what friends usually do with each other as she only has one friend. Meanwhile, Najima is at school thinking about how he thought he closed the distance between him and Takasaki by going on the camping trip. But ever since they returned, Takasaki has been ignoring him. A teacher now tells Takeda and Najima to go home as they have to attend a special class at the ministry. As they are leaving, they run into Nisaka, who seems to know about the special class but doesn't tell them. Najima goes to the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, where he sees a girl named Igarashi from his middle school and wonders if she is also here to attend the special lecture. He goes inside and sees Takeda with his assigned wife, Haruka. Lilina arrives shortly after and she and Najima exchange gifts with each other which makes Haruka say that it is obvious that they like each other. 
The lecture starts, and the ministry member Ichiju starts explaining to everyone why they should have sex. They even pass out condoms, but Lelina has no idea what these are. Ichiju keeps going on about the benefits of having sex, but the main reason to do so is that it feels good. They now show a video demonstrating sex, which makes Nejima think about Takasaki, but he quickly diverts his mind to something else. He sees that Lelina is behaving strangely and asks her if everything is okay, but Lelina is imagining having sex with Nejima. Another ministry member Yajima sits next to Nejima and asks him if he thinks it's right to choose the person someone loves or to choose the person assigned to them. He also tells him that they will know what he chooses as they will be watching from the next room, but he is just joking. After the video ends, Ichiju says that this demonstration will keep going on as the assigned couples are going to spend their nights together. Lelina and Nejima hear some people talking that if they don't have sex tonight, there is going to be a penalty. Lelina and Nejima now go to a bedroom where Nejima thinks about how all he has been worried about is himself, but his actions affect Lelina as well after which he suddenly pushes Lelina onto the bed. As Nejima lies on top of Lelina, he thinks about the penalty that some people were talking about will happen if they don't have sex. He starts to kiss her, and then stops momentarily, but seeing her cute face, he continues to do so. Afterward, Lelina asks him why did he kiss her, and he says that a member of the ministry told him that they would be watching them, and some people were saying a penalty would be incurred for not having sex, so he thought that they could just pretend to do it to be safe. Lelina tells him that he has been lied to because the government can't watch this because if this information got out, the people's belief on these marriages will weaken. Najima, embarrassed by his stupidity, apologizes to Lelina, who tells him that whenever she is around him, she can't control her emotions, so she says that they should not see each other for a while. The next morning, Najima runs into Yevjima, who asks him if he had sex with Lelina, but seeing him say no, he says that Najima would have had sex with Takasaki, and tells him to think about his life. Najima now goes to school, where the class is practicing a play for Romeo and Juliet for the cultural festival. The genders are swapped, so Takasaki is playing Romeo, and Nisaka is playing Juliet. The teacher had threatened Nisaka that if he did not participate, he would remove 30% of his attendance. Nijuma thinks about telling Lelina about the play but remembers that she doesn't want to talk to him. Nijuma starts helping with the play but gets injured as he tries to protect the gift given to him by Lelina. Takasaki hears about Nijuma's injury and rushes to check up on him. He tells her that he is alright but is sad because he hasn't been able to talk with Takasaki for a month. She tells him that she made herself stay away from Nijima because she doesn't deserve to be with him and it will be unfair to Lelina if she does whatever she wants. She asks Nijima why he is feeling down lately and he tells her that Lelina hasn't been talking to him because he hurt her feelings. Takasaki meets with Lelina and as they are having pancakes, Takasaki tells Lelina about the time when Najima made hotcakes in school and says that she would gladly eat Najima's hotcakes all her life. Lelina tells him that she has been avoiding Najima, but whenever she isn't with him, she feels lonely. Meanwhile, Najima runs into Yajima at school and asks him for advice on his situation. Yajima tells him that he has encountered a case like his before where a boy had been dating a girl for a long time, but when her notice arrived, he had to leave her. The girl told him that she would reject the notice if he married her, but he didn't have the courage to do so. The girl got married to her assigned husband, but when the boy got his notice, he realized how important the girl was to him. Yajima advises Najima that he shouldn't think too much and should just act. Najima messages Lelina that they should go see the burial mounds that she was talking about. The next day, Najima gets a letter from Lelina telling him that she still hasn't caught up to her feelings but will love to see the burial mounds someday. She also tells him to focus his attention on the cultural festival as it only comes along once. In the school, Takasaki is thinking about how Lelina loves Najima, but she hates that Najuna was assigned to her because she loves him. She also knows that she can say something to make them see the love between them, but she decides not to do so. Najima has now devoted all his attention to the cultural festival and is doing whatever he can to help the class. The costumes for the play arrive and everyone is very excited to see them except for Nisaka, who just leaves. Afterward, Najima catches up to Nisaka and asks him why he left when Nisaka tells him that he isn't going to participate in the play. Najima says that he has practiced so hard that if he quits now, all his efforts will be in vain, and he will also leave his classmates high and dry, but Nisaka doesn't seem to care. Nijima continues to try to convince him and puts his hand on Nisaka's shoulders, but he swats him away. Nisaka's dad now arrives and takes them both to a restaurant. Nisaka's dad tells Nisaka not to hit his friends, but Nijima says that he was the one who was bothering him, so it's all right. Nijima also says that he doesn't mind Nisaka hitting him as some of his good looks might show him off if Nisaka keeps hitting him, which makes Nisaka's dad laugh. He tells Nijima that Nisaka was very popular when he was a kid and wasn't like what he is now, but Nijima says that Nisaka is still very popular and is a lead actor in a play. Nisaka's father is surprised by this as Nisaka doesn't tell him what's going on in his school. 
Misaka goes to the washroom, and his dad says to Najima that it's amazing that Misaka allows Najima to hang around him because his personality is very different from others. He asks Najima to keep taking care of Misaka as it seems that Misaka opens up to Najima. Now Najima and Nizaka are going home, and Najima keeps asking Misaka to play the role, but he keeps refusing. Nisaka says that it is a dumb story about two people who just fell in love and died, but Najima says that their situation is similar to what people today are facing. Similar to Romeo and Juliet, people today can't live with the person they love, but he says that even though the story is old and dumb, if Nisaka plays it, it will become the most beautiful story. Nisaka, seeing how much Najima wants him to play the role, agrees to do it. At school, the flyers for the play arrive, and Menjuma is bringing them to the executive committee when he runs into Takasaki, who offers to help him. Afterward, he feels like Takasaki is pushing herself and asks her about it when she says that she didn't want to do this role, but she can't disappoint her classmates. That's why he is pushing herself a little harder than usual. She says that Nisaka and her were asked to kiss each other for the play, but they refused. Minjima asks her what she really thinks of Nisaka, and she says that she is surprised by how seriously Nisaka is taking this play. She now asks Najima if he has fallen in love with Lilina, but he says that he only loves her. He asks Takasaki what love really is, and she tells him that it's when a person's eyes keep looking for the other person when they are not around. Only watching them from afar makes their day go better, and that was how she felt about Menjima until six months ago. But from then, her feelings have increased even more. When they were little, Takasaki wanted to kiss Najima, go on trips with him, and go to the same school with him so that they could be together. And seeing how all these things came true, she was very happy. She was prepared to keep her feelings hidden, but when Najima confessed his feelings, she felt so happy. Takasaki now starts crying as she feels sad that she was not assigned to be his wife. Najima hugs her, but she tells him to let go as it's not right, but Najima still holds on to her. Takasaki says that these feelings will hurt her later, but she still can't throw them away. The day of the cultural festival arrives and Nenjima is trying to pass out flyers of their play, but nobody is interested in him. Takasaki is gathering all the attention as she looks very beautiful wearing the Romeo costume. Takasaki had told Najima to forget whatever she said to him because she doesn't want Lilina to get upset, but her words are still lingering in his mind. He realizes that Takasaki had been putting up a smile for him, but on the inside, she was very hurt. Takasaki's old friends arrive and seeing them, Najima runs away as he also used to be in their class, and one of Takasaki's friends doesn't like Najima very much. Najima runs into Yajima, who has been assigned to various other students in this school, so he has to keep an eye on them. Nijima had told Yajima about the incident where he had gotten Takasaki's name in his notice, but Yajima tells him that the names are first written on the paper document and then sent via a mobile notice, so the name on the document was the real name. He tells Majima that he looked around, all the facts indicate that his assigned partner is Lilina. He reveals that there was an interference in his mobile notifications, so either it was a false notification or someone deliberately sent him the fake notice. Lilina arrives at the school to see the play along with her new friend, who tag along to see Najima. Meanwhile, Najima tries to focus his attention on just passing out the flyers when he runs into Lilina. They both look into each other's eyes for a long time, and Lilina just asks him for directions to the drama club and leaves, which makes Najima think that she is still mad at him. Najima goes to Nisaka, who is on his way to get dressed for the play, and Najima tries to tag along with him to see him wear his costume, but Nisaka turns him away. Nisaka realizes that Najima is acting weird and asks him what is going on when Najima tells him about his awkward interaction with Lilina and how he still thinks that she hates him, but Nisaka says that she wouldn't have come all this way if she still hated him. Everyone goes backstage and Najima stays with Nisaka as he gets dressed and says that he doesn't feel like he contributed anything to this play, but Nisaka tells him that when he sees them perform the play, he will forget all his regrets. The play now starts and everyone gives an amazing performance which earns them a standing ovation from the audience. After the play, Najima runs into Igarashi, Takasaki's friend, who tells him that she knows about the notification he got with Takasaki's name. Lilina, who hears their conversation, asks her what she means by that, and she says that Takasaki is Najima's destined partner. Lilina keeps asking Igarashi what she means by destined partners, but Igarashi refuses to answer. She says that Takasaki has something she wants to protect and is even lying to do that, so she will do her best to protect Takasaki. Igarashi leaves, after which Najima tells Lilina about the notice with Takasaki's name, which makes Lilina think that she and Najima were matched by mistake, but Najima ensures her that she was the right match as Yajima had told him. Najima apologizes to Lilina for talking with her casually even though she had told him to stay away from her, but she says that they have bigger things to worry about right now. She tells him that they should ask Takasaki for Igarashi's contact information, but when they go to see her, she is surrounded by fans of her play. Lilina and Najima compliment Takasaki for her amazing performance as Romeo, and they also praise Nistaka. 
Nisaka's brother and father arrive, with his brother laughing at him for dressing like a girl. Nisaka's father thanks Najima for taking Mizaka on the camping trip and then offers him to come to a wedding with his friends. The next day, Najima takes Igarishi's info from Takasaki and brings up enough courage to message her. Meanwhile, Lillian's classmates are finally starting to talk with her, but she is surprised by it and asks her friend, who tells her that before she used to be grumpy, but now her emotions and facial expression have changed and that's why other classmates are approaching her. She gets a message from Najima. And when she goes to meet her, he is making burial mounds in the park while being depressed as his friend request was rejected by Igarashi. Belina says that she will try to message her, and Menjuma tells her that it's no use because Igarashi didn't accept his request, who used to be in her school, so she isn't going to accept her request either. Menjuma is shocked to see that Lelina's friend request is accepted, and Igarashi messages Lelina to meet with her tomorrow and allows Najima to accompany her. They meet with her, and Lelina gets straight to the point, asking her what she meant when she said destined partners, but Igarashi says that they should go somewhere else to talk. She takes them to a cat cafe, where both the girls get distracted playing with cats. Nijima says that Igarashi's account must have a bug because when he sent her a friend request, he got blocked, but she tells him that there isn't a bug and that she blocked him on purpose. She now reveals that she used to hate Takasaki because she always put up a hollow smile and no one could ever know what she was thinking. One day, she saw her trying to buy photos of Najima from the other class and she approached her, asking about it, and at that moment, she realized that Takasaki liked Najima and it was the first time she saw the real her. Igarashi reveals that her grandmother was the one who came up with the notice system and she used to say that once you meet your assigned person, you will feel a kind of love that you have never felt before. Ijuma arrives, tells Igarashi to stop filling their heads with nonsense and tells them that the love you feel with someone of your choice and with one assigned to you is completely different. Igarashi now leaves saying that Nenjima isn't going to choose Takasaki anyway, so they should just forget what she said to them. Afterward, as Lalina and Najima go to their homes, Elena asks him if she's an idiot for trying to cheer him and Takasaki, but he tells her that being straightforward and honest is one of her best qualities. Majima, Nisaka, Lalina, and Takasi go to Nisaka's brother's wedding, and on their way, Majima asks Nisaka why he isn't at the wedding earlier, and he says that he doesn't want his relatives to question his life choices while he waits for the wedding to start. He says that he is kind of relieved that his brother is getting married to his assigned wife, because ever since they were little, their parents always told them about how happy they are marrying each other, so it felt like they had a responsibility to follow their footsteps and get married to their assigned spouse. But now that his brother is getting married, he doesn't have to do the same thing. As they get to the wedding, a woman approaches them asking Lelina and Takasaki to be models for their pamphlet. They will be put in wedding dresses for the pictures and Lelina and Takasaki agree to it. The woman takes their information, tells them they will be contacted later, and even allows Najima to come to watch her assigned wife. The wedding now starts and they show a video of all the memories between the groom and bride, which makes Najima think about how if he chooses Lelina to marry, all the memories with Takasaki will feel like they never existed. Lelina's eyes start to sparkle, seeing how wonderful the wedding ceremony is and she tells Takasaki about how her classmates have started to talk with her because of the changes she has undergone after meeting her and Najima. She says it would never have been possible without them and thanks Takasaki for being friends with her. The time for the bouquet toss arrives when Najima realizes that he left his mobile in the hall and as he goes to bring it back, he sees Takasaki crying. He asks her what he can do to help her and she asks him to tell her that he loves her even if he is lying. Melina goes to find Najima as he has been gone for a very long time, but she sees Takasaki and Najima kissing and returns to everyone. At night, Najima thinks about how when he was kissing Takasaki, he felt everything was right but felt guilty after coming home. He realizes that at that moment, even though she was physically closer to him, in reality, she was further away from him than ever before. The next morning, Najima and Lelina's family go to the hot springs. Lelina and Najima explore the town, but Lelina can't stop thinking about Najima and Takasaki's kiss. She realizes that nothing is going to happen if she just keeps thinking about it and decides to enjoy her time. They return to their hotel, where their families have given them a single room, but Nenjima tells her that she can rest easy as he won't try something on her. Nenjima now goes to enjoy the hot spring and Lelina also gets into the hot springs on the other side of the fence. She asks Nenjima what Igarashi meant by destined partners, but Nenjima has no clue. He says that in elementary school, Takasaki must have been his destined partner, as everything he did was to be with her. At night, Lelina gets up and tells Majima that she wants to have a talk with him. He says that they should turn on the lights, but she wants them to stay off as she will be too embarrassed to say what she is about to say. Majima starts blabbering when Lelina interrupts him and tells him that he should choose Takasaki over her. Lelina tells Majima that before she met him and Takasaki, she doesn't even remember how she used to live her life. She mostly just studied and stayed inside, but after meeting them, her whole life took a turn. She would be excited to spend the day with both of them and at night would sleep thinking about all the fun things they did during the day. On days they didn't meet, she would make a list of things she did and would tell them the next day. She also made new friends because of them, so even if Najima and Takasaki aren't fated lovers, they deserve a chance to be with each other. 
She tells him that after researching, she's found a way to get out of marrying your assigned spouse without it being a bad mark. All they have to do is pretend that they don't like each other and that they will never be the right person for each other. The ministry will put them in counseling and other procedures, but they have to keep lying. In almost six months, they will be able to get out of the notice, and after that, they can never be matched with each other. Takasaki has to do the same thing with her assigned husband, and afterward, Takasaki and Najima can be together. Najima starts crying and saying that he doesn't want to pretend to hate Lelina for six months, but Lelina manages to convince him to go along with her plan. Lelina says that this will hurt her, but the pain will be balanced out by all the pleasant memories they have given her. She tells him that even if they are not assigned to each other, she will always be by Najima's side. Lita now says that she doesn't want to mess up holding hands and kissing with her next assigned husband. She asks Najima if he can practice kissing with her. Najima kisses her and afterward, Najima is conflicted about his feelings because he thinks that if what he feels for Lelina isn't love, then he doesn't know what love is. After they return home, Najima's mom tries to get him to go to the bridal photo shoot that Lelina and Takasaki are having, but Najima decides not to go. Nisaka comes to his house with a gift his father sent for Najima as a thank you for attending the wedding. Nisaka asks him why he isn't going to the photo shoot, and Najima says that he has hurt Lelina and Takasaki and can't face them anymore. Najima says that he loves them both but doesn't know how to be fair to them. Nisaka tells him that he doesn't have to be fair as all the two of them want is for him to acknowledge them. He says that if they both also love him, it will be as easy to make them happy as it is to hurt them, so he should follow his true feelings. Najima thanks Misaka for his advice and starts running to meet Lelina and Takasaki. Lelina tells Takasaki about her plan, but Takasaki says that it is impossible. When Lelina asks her why it's not possible, she says that she can't tell her or Najima because she loves them both. Takasaki says that Lelina is the perfect wife for Najima, but Lelina says that she is lying because that can't be the extent of her love for Najima. Takasaki says that she might be lying, but she will turn the lie into truth if it means that Najima and Lelina can be happy. Meanwhile, Najima is running toward them while thinking about how he wants to be with both of them. He arrives at the photo shoot and Lelina says that they were waiting for him. He tells Takasaki that she looks very pretty, which makes her cry as she is very happy to hear that from him. Lelina now invites Najima to take pictures with them while he thinks about the uncertain path ahead and the interesting possibilities that await them. 